In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the best ways that you could fortify and protect your gaming console or gaming PC with a battery backup, surge protector, and this not only protects the device, but this will protect all the networking and internet components that allow you to get that system out to the internet. Stay tuned. So this UPS unit, which stands for Uninterrupted Power Supply, is one of many. This one is a 1500 VA unit, and it can take up to 900 watts of power. So if you have a console that draws significantly less wattage, you can actually gear a UPS unit towards that wattage. And what I will be doing is leaving uh, basic console power draw in the description and UPS units that I would recommend for the each specific console and this one is actually pretty good for a gaming PC because they can sometimes draw a ton of power. Alright let's take a look and see what we have here. UPS units right here. User manual. Warranty. Protection policy. This looks to be like a USB console cable. We got Ethernet RG45 on one side and USB 2.0 on the other. We'll go over that later. And this looks like a regular coax cable. We got the uh, test. They tested the battery in the unit before leaving the facility. According to the sticker, it wants me to lay the uh, UPS unit on its side. And let's go ahead and check out what we have here. Alright, so it just wants you to plug in the uh, red terminal, which is right here. There we go, red terminal's plugged in. Alright, so looking over the back of this unit, starting from number one, we have the USB and serial port right here. We have the ground screw right here. We have the building wire fault indicator, which is right here. Coaxial ports with surge protection. That is number four, which is going to be right here. Circuit breaker. That's right here. Surge protected outlets. Number six. That's going to be on this side. In out Ethernet surge protected ports, number seven, that's going to be here. Battery backup outlets with, with surge protections, number eight, so that's on the left hand side. So right here it shows you the icon that it is online and receiving power from the wall. Right here you have the load, which nothing's plugged into it right now, this status indicator right here, because actually nothing is plugged into it, and then right below it you have the battery indicator. You have a noise icon here that tells you whether if, when this, when this device loses power, it can give you an audible alarm. Wow, this, this can be deactivated or enabled. And what's really cool is that, I'm going to show you this later, but in the software, the Schneider Electric software, you can configure this to be audible or inaudible on a scheduled interval. So you can schedule time, like for example when you're sleeping. If this thing loses power, it will not alert you. On the left hand side you have your menu button, your power button, and then here you can actually mute the sound manually. So the display of this UPS unit is really cool. In fact, these UPS units are very interesting to me. So right, at, right here on the front you'll see that it shows you how much voltage is going into the UPS unit. And right now it's at 118 volts. Nominal perfect scenario is 120 volts. More on that later. The next one is going to be how many events that this unit went through where it lost power to the unit itself and had to run off battery. This also gives you how much runtime based on a certain amount of load on the UPS unit. How much load and wattage so it's almost like a watt meter. This is a really cool feature. I have I hooked this up to a gaming PC that I have 
and uh, it's kind of neat to watch how high the uh, wattage goes. I think the max for this is 900 watts. You also have load percentage. Now you have voltage going out through the outlets of this device. So not only does it show you how much voltage is coming in from the wall, but how much is going out through the outlets of this UPS unit. And what's really cool is that this UPS unit has what is called automatic voltage regulation. And that is set by a predefined voltage range in the unit. I believe it is, it goes from like 88 volts, which is really low in my opinion, to like 143 or 135. I will put that up on the screen right now. But this actually kicked on for me not too long ago. And I thought it was really interesting because they state in the manual that automatic voltage, voltage regulation does not use the battery. And there was no indication to me that, this was, that the battery was being used. In fact, when automatic voltage, voltage regulation was turned on, it was perfectly silent, which I thought was interesting. And it boosted it very close, if not right at 120 volts, which is nominal. Right here, it gives you the, the sine wave output of the device. So right here, you see this icon. It's showing that it's going out away from the device. So this is outputting a pure sine wave of 60 hertz. Not only does this UPS unit provide excellent battery backup power for when the grid goes down, allowing you to gracefully shut down your gaming console or gaming PC, it also provides a ton of surge protection. And what, what you can actually do is take the coaxial connection that you would use for your uh, modem, if you would have this type of setup, you can run the coaxial cable from the wall to the UPS unit and then from the UPS unit to your cable modem and that will provide surge protection to your internet serving device. In addition to that, you can also protect your ethernet cables, your network cables that, that also provide network connection, a physical network connection to your gaming console or gaming PC. You would run the ethernet from your modem to the UPS unit and then from the UPS unit to like a router or to your next network device. And that will also provide surge protection for ethernet and your network. So right here you have the power shoot software and here's the main front and here's the main window. You have monitor your system, view some summary or historical events. You can click on these. These are links, view battery backup status information, configure shutdown options of your battery backup, configure your battery backup alarm, change the cost of your energy, view battery backup energy usage and cost. So moving further down under monitor system, we have performance right here. It's going to give you the battery backup last intervened on, and it's also going to give you the power problem history view performance information for the past four weeks. You can actually set that to one week, 12 weeks, 24 weeks, or four weeks. It gives you here a blackout, which was me probably just unplugging the device for testing for the sake of this video. And we have under voltage, over voltage, electrical noise, Moving further down to current status, we have AC utility power, which is what it's currently running on because we currently have power to the UPS unit. Energy usage rate, right now it's about 3.456 kilowatt hours per day. The remaining battery charge is 100% because it's not even being used. Battery is currently charged. Last transfer to battery was caused by, there was a blackout on 7-23-2022. That was probably me just unplugging the uh, UPS unit. Result of last manual self-test is not recorded. I don't think it was ever run. And it gives you the input voltage, which is currently coming from the wall, which is 115 volts. You can actually run a self-test here. And you can actually set a predefined date to replace the battery energy usage here. You can actually change the energy cost to what it is in your local area. And you can set the usage over the past month, day, week, or year and it'll give you a breakdown of, of everything. Options here, you can enable the PowerShoot software notification sounds. You can always show icon on the taskbar. You can enable software update notifications, and you can also manually check for updates. And you can also set here to send power quality information back to the manufacturer. Runtime here, you can actually prioritize battery, or you can prioritize runtime. So I chose to, pri 
to preserve battery power. So when the power event happens, it's going to shut down my computer after it has been on battery backup power for five minutes. So it's going to save a lot of that battery. And that also depends on the load of the UPS unit. You can also set it to run for as long as possible, and it'll shut down the computer when there's only five minutes left on the battery. You can set the defaults here and click apply or cancel out of the menu. For notifications, you can set the uh, alarms when you lose power to be on all the time, which is what I have selected. You can disable them so they never uh, present an audible alarm when there is loss of power. Or you can actually set predefined schedules. For example, I have it set here from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., which would be most likely during the hours of when you're sleeping. So it will not beep when, it lo when you, the UPS unit loses power. Sensitivity, you can have it set depending on how bad or good your power grid, the power coming from the grid is. So if you want it on high, that means it's going to be really sensitive and the battery is going to take over um, more often. Or you can set it on low if you have really poor grid power and you don't want it to be constantly switching over. Right here you can set the voltage ranges. I have them set up as tight as possible because I want less fluctuation. Even though this is a very broad voltage range. Uh, the perfect ideal voltage is nominal which is 120 volts. And this is the highest or the lowest of the high value I can go which is 144 volts. And this is the highest of the lowest setting that I can go which is 88 volts so when it goes out of this range the automatic voltage regulation will kick on to regulate and set the outgoing voltage to as close to 120 volts nominal as possible so I think it's very interesting the amount of levels of surge protection and battery backup capabilities that this unit has to offer. If you'd like to find out more, there will be links in the description below. And I will also leave links to models that will go with uh, gaming consoles, different types of PCs, depending on the power supply wattage. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. For all you diehard systematics out there, I know it's supposed to come out with another part of a series for the next upcoming video, which is benchmarking the i5-12400 and the RTX 3080 Ti 12 gigabyte. I assure you that video is on its way. Stay tuned. As always, I will see you in the next video.